Prophet Yusuf السلام, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his mercy and blessings upon him and his peace and tranquility upon Prophet Yusuf and all of the Anbiya was extremely good looking. There are narrations that say that Prophet Yusuf السلام, received half of beauty that was ever created and the rest of creation, the world, the plants, the animals, the people, everything, the universe got the other half. So he got one half and everyone else got the other half. You think Brad Pitt's good looking? You think George Clooney's good looking? Let's be serious. <laughs> MashaAllah, he was the most beautiful being. And there are some narrations that say Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was more beautiful, but Allah they were both beautiful. Yusuf Alayhi was one of the most beautiful beings to ever walk the face of this earth. And you know what he, you know what he ran into, brothers? Hey, Abdul, I want to go to prom with you. You're cute. That's not prom, brothers. He wasn't running into a sister who wanted to go to prom. He didn't get that Facebook poke. He didn't, he didn't get a friend request. He didn't get any of that. No MySpace pic. He didn't get those. I know what you're saying. Come on, let's be honest. I see your guys' pictures. Please. He got a woman. Brothers. Real quick, this is really important. Because I know a lot of us are struggling with, with, with the situation with females. Muslim or non-Muslim, I know, I know, I feel for you. I'm not gonna judge you, I feel for you. He got a woman who was not only the wealthiest woman in the town. Wealthy means what? She can buy the best clothes, she can buy the best lotion, she can have the best looking body, she has all that. Not only the wealthiest, the most popular, and she was known as the most beautiful. She was fine. I don't ever use that language, but you have to get the, you have to get like the, the essence of what I'm talking about. She wasn't like, oh my God, she was beautiful. She was, she was good looking. <laughs> right? So she was the best looking woman of the time. And did she go up to him and ask him to prom? Did she ask him to go out on a date with her? She said, straight up, let's commit zina right now. Why are you guys laughing? She said, straight up, I want you. Yeah. <laughs> this woman said to Yusuf alayhi salam, take me. I want you. You're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Even though I'm married, I'll cheat on my husband with you. I have money. I have everything you want. I'm beautiful. And in the Quran, it said what? She desired him. She felt desire towards him, and he felt an inkling of desire towards her. So whenever people tell you, brother, you're religious, you shouldn't have any problems blowing your gaze, tell them. Prophet Yusuf had a little bit of issue, not trouble, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the NBA. But to show us that the prophets were humans, and that we can relate to them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us what happened in his heart, an inkling, a little tick, oh, she, yeah, right? What did he say though? All of us, we can agree. We felt that, right? We have issues with our grace. We felt that. What did he do? Did he ask for her number? Did he say, yeah, I'll hang out with you? He said, yeah, Allah, make the prison more beautiful to me than her. And Allah answered his dua. He physically, modestly submitted to Allah. Spiritually, intellectually, and that came out in his physical, physical shyness. He said, Ya Allah, make the prison more beautiful to me because I don't want to suffer the consequences. I don't want to commit any wrong deeds. I don't even want to have the thought, the intention of being with this woman. So take me to the prison right away. And by the way, the prison wasn't like prison where you get like an hour of basketball time. You get to watch ESPN on the flat screen. Like it's not American prison. This is where they shackle you to the wall, where the people next to you are telling you they're going to die, where they don't feed you. It's dirty. It's dark. It's dungy. Make that more beautiful to me than this woman. So brothers, I gave the sisters the inspirational message, mashallah. Whenever you encounter this issue of any sort of female temptation, ask Allah to take your heart and solidify it and make a fortress around it so that you don't have to fall into anything. Last week, a brother who goes to Fajr at the masjid came up to me crying, I committed zina, with a hijabi girl. What do I do? I just recently got hired as a youth director and assistant imam in Dallas. I'm already getting emails. My husband, married of 15 years, five kids, cheats on me for the last five years. What do I do? Don't think 
that because you're macho man, I know my limits, bro. Come on. I'm just going to go hit up some Jamba Juice. That's it. No. One step, one step, one step. Shaitan comes slowly, but eventually he'll get you. And so make sure that we follow the sunnah of Prophet Yusuf and ask Allah to protect us, whether they be Muslim or non-Muslim, because it's not the fault of the person necessarily, as much as the fault of our nafs. So we ask Allah to strengthen our nufus, and we ask Allah to put us firmly upon his deed. Allahumma thabit kulubana ala deenik, ya muqalib al kulub thabit kulubana ala deenik. Ya Rabbul Alameen, please make it beneficial. Please make our hearts attached to you and to the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.